Hi, how's it going? Uh, so basically, we're in quarantine due to Corona and I've decided to pass the time. You're allowed to go fishing. So I'm going to start a YouTube. More, I'm not looking for this to go anywhere really. I'm just making it for myself. Uh, share what I know. And just try and document like times I do go fishing, times I do catch nice fish, uh, just stuff like that. I'm uh, fishing the last four years properly now, like straight. Um, so I have a decent amount of gear now at this stage. Uh, a lot of it's pike probably my favorite fish in general to go to good fight off them always fun uh i do have perch gear i've just got fly rod recently just to try and get into trout to see uh this year um i have coarse gear as well stuff like that um but i'm gonna go through most of my baits today i think tools traces stuff i like to use uh to catch pike i'll just start with the probably one of the most expensive baits i have uh the mazar mouse i've heard great things about it but for the area i fish i fish kildare uh so basically i have the river system of the barrow uh the river system of slaney uh, I have the Liffey as well if I wanted to fish it and the Grand Canal. So baits like this, it doesn't seem, I haven't had a pike on it yet. Uh, I've seen good pike being caught online with it, but I, that's in Sweden and stuff like that. I've, I haven't seen a lot of people in Ireland actually really promote this, if that makes sense. I kind of bought it. I, I seen it online, bought it because uh, other people were catching on it abroad and... Yeah, I haven't caught anything on it since. This is a 90 gram bait, uh, quite a big bait. Probably not big for some people, but I'm bigger for others. Uh, all, most of my rods, my main rod, I'll get into my rods in a di different video probably, uh, all of them, like more in depth, if that makes sense. But I have a bait casting rod, uh, throws up to 100 grams. It's a Savage Gear Woody rod. Uh, so, it's jerk bait rod, but it works great for swim baits and all 100 gram baits basically, or all baits up to 100 grams. Uh, so yeah, I haven't had much action on that now myself. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with this uh, bait. I love the looks of it, but I lost the back tail of it. A pike took the other tail. It comes with two tails, a paddle tail, and it comes with a curly tail. Uh, with the curly tail, I've had a load of action on it. Uh, now that I lost the curly tail because the pike bit it off, I haven't been able to buy a new one yet. The paddle tail isn't doing a lot of a lot of work for me. This bait's a jerk bait, and it doesn't really jerk right with the paddle tail. If that makes sense, the paddle tail makes a big wake behind it, uh, but it doesn't jerk right. It kind of pulls it pulls back if that makes sense because of the size of the tail on it. Uh, but I have, I do enjoy using the bait. It was, I think, 20 quid to buy. Uh, I'm pretty sh I don't know now the exact gram of it. I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's around 70 grams. Maybe a bit lower. Um, but it's a good bait. It's a nice looking bait. I caught a good few fish on it. Like, I caught uh, two nice pike on that. This bait, uh, I bought... Just before, this is a good story actually. I bought this bait because I like shads. Uh, one of my probably favorite baits are shads. I have a lot of shad soft plastics. I bought this bait and I went to a pike competition that was uh, being held and on the river. And I threw it, first cast I had a pike take it and drop it. And then I had no action for the rest of the day until I cast it in the middle of the water, was bringing it in and I caught an eight pound salmon on it. Um, that was my first and ever, only salmon I've ever caught. That was this year, or sorry, last year. And it was 
I thought it was the best fight I've ever had in my life. I've never been more ecstatic over catching a fish. It was pure joy to catch that fish. It was, I thought it was a 20 pound pike the way it was fighting. It was huge, like huge tail. I'll try and throw, uh, I don't know really how to edit videos, so I'm gonna have to research that, but I'm gonna try and throw in pictures of like my best uh, catches on the baits, uh, if I can find them. But yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite baits just because I caught a salmon on it. Fire Tiger is always a good color. I bought this the other day, and um, it's uh, Western Bull Tees. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's only 50, it's 56 grams. I have a 10 gram jig head rig in it. Uh, just a hook in the middle. I know the hook probably looks off center for a lot of people, but I don't want to keep, I don't want to put the hook any uh, lower, if that makes sense. I'll leave the, I'll hook the hook in when I cast it so it doesn't tangle up on itself. So the hook will lay there. That, if you can see that on the video, I'll lay right there. So when it's swimming, there's not uh, any tension against the tail. And then it swims better, it gives it better paddle on it. Lovely color, a uh, cola purchase that color, I'm pretty sure. I'm just gonna quickly show this box. A bit uh, more than anything else, it's just to have a quick look in it because it's a uh, it's not a box I regularly use. Uh, it's just a perch box, just a small little jig, spinners, stuff like that. I'll just show you a basic view into it. Um not perch are great fish to fish for, but it's not my favourite uh pastime. Uh, kind of annoys me at times to try and fish for perch as a lot of perch around where I live on the canal are very small and don't seem to be growing at all. Uh, now I have a lot of spinners. This is a oh, Savage Year the Mega Bush, I think. Comes with a willow blade and a Colorado blade. Basically a skinny blade which just sends off a flash and then a bigger rounder blade that sends off vibration. Um I cut I made a bad decision with this to be honest. I cut the hair off it. And the reason I did that was it kept getting tangled in my box when I was a uh, trying to fish, like trying to bring it out with me. Uh, probably not the best decision to do with a bait to ruin the basic appeal of the whole bait. Uh, I kept all the pink strands. I bought this in England when I went over. Um, I've had a, a good few uh, bites on spinner baits. I haven't had that one on this one yet. I think it might be the size more than anything else. The ones I did catch on were smaller in general. Uh, I bought this in a fishing show not long ago. Uh, big fucking musky spinner basically. Uh, two big blades on it. I think it's like 60 grams. Don't know what brand it is now. Um, but it's basically just a huge spinner just for, uh, for pike and musky. Uh, great. It actually looks great in the water. It's just uh, I haven't given it much chance. I don't really like fishing spinners that much. Um, and then this one I just kind of bought for uh, the fun of it. It's, it's actually a catfish spinner. But uh, I just like the colour of it. So I was like, right, I'll buy it. Why not? It's only about four or five euro in the fishing show that I went to. Um, there's no catfish in Ireland, but... Still, Pike can go for and Pike will go for a sausage if you throw it in, if he's hungry enough. Uh, so, there's I as you can see, all my spinner baits have hair on the hooks. I find it the best way to use spinners. Sorry, spinner baits. I'm calling them uh, spinners. Is when they have a hook or when they have fur on the hooks because it looks more like an injured fish. Then, just a quick show on the back of this. This is my small flybacks uh, that I just got into. Some, sm I don't even know what they're called to be honest. Uh, I know that's just that's just a piece of floating corn. Just I just throw, threw some stuff in this just to try it out. They're just two small cannibal uh, curly shads. That's a drop <laughs> drop shot uh, minnow. Uh, there's just a size zero spinner in there. Uh, two flies, just a fly on my fly rod as well. Uh, I I'm not re I I enjoy fly fishing. It's just I'm not really big into it yet. Like um, I don't think I will ever be over my pike obsession. To be honest, a lot of jerk baits here. Um, I'm just going to go quickly through these jerk baits. 
because a lot of them are the same kind of deal in my opinion and um, basically if i can probably unhook it sorry uh, i'll just go through most quickly just go through my jerk bits i i, I have the guppy junior i have a fire tiger salmo 70 gram uh i forget what centimeter now uh, it's the biggest salmo you can get though i have the real roach salmo uh 70 cent uh, 70 grams as well i have the the injured herring salmo salmo i'm pretty sure it's called um i can tell you the numbers they're just, oh sorry i can tell you that's fire tiger anyway that's the real roach and that's a herring this bay has caught me in the smaller size the medium size of the salmons caught me a 13 pound pike last year my biggest pike spinning uh since then uh oh no it was a 13 yeah it was i'm pretty sure it was 13 i didn't weigh it but it was just the size like it was really long not very built though if that makes sense i am um, this is a damn jawbreaker perch pattern uh, I've went fishing there, geez, I think it was two weeks ago, and I caught four pike on this one bit alone. And you can see the bite marks in the bottom of it. It is absolutely mangled from that session. Uh, I, I actually never thought I'd catch a fish in this bay, but then that day it was sunny. This bit is actually reflective, if you can see it. It's like holographic. Um, so when I was flicking it, the fucking the flash and the rattle really set off the pike. Um, two small pike, two pound piece maybe. I missed a nice, I say a seven pounder, and then I got a a good ten. Then that day as well, big chubby pike. Yeah, the stomach was literally like a rock full of fish. Big Buster Jerk ninety gram. Uh, I'm pretty sure the color is called parrot. Haven't had much luck on it. Just kind of bought it because it's a buster jerk. Everyone kind of has a buster jerk in their bait box. Uh, I actually just found out this dish color is discontinued. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I have a discontinued bait basically. Um, but I don't know if I'll ever see a pike actually go for it. It's a bit of a mag color. I think I'll go throw it more time more in the winter when it's dark or water. It's kind of what I do. Um, it's kind of what's done normally is cut throw natural patterns in clear sunny conditions throw light or throw unnatural patterns like fire tigers uh pinks i have a fucking four play here kite fish colored throw them more in the winter time or when it's darker stuff like that uh darker water conditions darker time um it's just kind of that's the way most pike fishermen work. Anyway, this is a low rider uh, four play hard body. Um, I bought this for a gimmick, uh, just because it's kai coloured. Um, I found that really cool. Like kai fish are my kai carp are my favourite looking fish. Uh, and I was like, oh, I just I throw that in my bait box. I never know. Maybe one day I'll catch something on it. Uh, my cheapest bits. But the most fun, funny looking, I think. Shakespeare Mega S, I think. They're basically just a crankbait, a very rattly crankbait. Got in perch pattern, green perch, uh, roach pattern. I've caught in a, on the smaller version of this two pike. I know actually a lot of people like recommend these baits, but because they're cheap, they're quite a good bait for the money. Uh, but I always rather I'd always rather uh, use soft plastics. Uh, it's just my opinion. It's just I, t I feel like when a pike bites a soft plastic, it feels more natural to them, so they won't let go. Uh, they'll hang on longer. For an inexperienced fisherman, if a pike hang on hangs on longer, you usually get a better hook up. Uh, just that's my opinion on the on it. Hard baits are good. Smaller hard bits when you're beginning though, because then a pike can take the whole hard bit in its mouth, and then you're not missing the pike. You're not just getting side swipe on the bait, hits the bait, feels it's hard, and then goes away like, and doesn't bite it again. Um, 
This is a uh, sorry swim pike SS. It is a giant a bit. I think there's there's a fucking load of giants. I'm not gonna count them on. <laughs> We'd be here all day. But it basically just swims like that in the water. Uh, if I can move it like that, very fast or like that. Uh, very snake like actually. I've it's probably my favorite looking bait in the water when it swims. It doesn't look very natural, but it's actually quite uh fun to look, throw. I have spare you get spare fins with this bait. Uh, I've seen a lot of these kind of baits on wish and stuff. I just don't buy off wish. I don't, don't have anything against wish. Last time I bought stuff off wish, they're very cheap quality. I think a lot of the broke first time I was using them. Hooks weren't made up to quality, but that's what you pay for basically. This bait was 30 quid in uh, the local tackle shop uh, where I live. Very good bait though. Would recommend buying it if you're more experienced. I don't recommend buying any kind of expensive bait just as you start off. In case it's a waste, it's going to be a waste of money if you don't, uh, don't want, to, if you don't like, basically the way I see it, it's going to be a major waste of money to tr buy expensive baits if you're not going to throw them on the regular. I always throw all my baits. I bring every bait with me. You never know what bait you might use on a day. Uh, you never know what the pike might want. So I just bring all my baits with me. If you're starting off, start off with curly tailed soft plastics, shad type soft plastics um they're always very cheap i'm pretty sure there's the uh, there's a brand called kinetic you get like a seven pack of curly tails i think they're maybe 10 euro you get jig heads with them great fucking starting same thing with paddle tail com thing you get seven paddle tails jig heads with it great way to start if you want to start with smaller jerk baits and stuff i'd start with um, it's hard to say i like I used to use Rapalas, small little Rapala jerk baits. Uh, Fire Tiger, I started off with because uh, Fire Tiger is always a good color. Pike always seemed to want to go for a Fire Tiger. It's just a light color, good, good all around color. Good winter time, good in summertime if the water is darker. Uh, it's just fun to use jerk baits. I find uh, sometimes, especially sometimes. Fish want to go for a jerk bait. Sometimes they want to go for a curly tail. Sometimes they want to go for a paddle tail. It's just you have to bring everything with you. Be prepared, and you catch fish. Hopefully, uh, I bought this for the gimmick. Not really much to see. Savage gear, thirty centimeter, top water snake, to wake bait. Bought it just to have a heavier top water. Uh, yeah, have, there's no snakes in Ireland. It's just kind of bought it for the laugh. So that's basically my hard box done. Um, this is where most of my baits are now, I have to say. I have, let's try and get these out. Three soft four plays to come in a three pack. Bought these for 15 euro. You come with, if they come with this clip, headpiece with a lip, which makes it dive and swim. I have this set up with the Fire Tiger version because Fire Tiger's my favorite color in the four plays. We have a roach with the punch rig. I don't know actually what the rig's called, but I'm pretty sure it's called the punch rig. Eyes there, swims, doesn't dive, let it sink itself, rip it up. That's how I fished them. Fish that bait now myself. It's just a good way of fishing it. I have this set up with just two stinger hooks. Um, swims perfect. Uh, I has a lot of damage to it because i was using this for target practice with a bucket one day uh that's always a good thing to do by the way get yourself a bucket get yourself your rod out small bait big bait if you want wherever you're used to throwing and just try and throw it into the bucket it'll get your casting better it's always good to do just if you're bored especially during quarantine um anyway this is the dirty roach color that other color that i just had the silver ones just roach this used to have red eyes on it it's very good bait very nice bear. Caught a good few fish on them. Uh, would recommend buying them if you're just starting. This is an unrigged uh, blood belly river roach. I have the rigged version of it as well in this normal roach. As you can see, I have two hooks in it. I know I was saying about the bull tees, you only use one hook on it because of the tail action, but this tail is, this body is so fat. 
and the tail is so uh it's so chunky anyway it moves so well with just the hook even in the tail um great bait as well 70 gram baits both of them i have two spares as well bought in the two colors uh i'm just waiting to get rigs for this one this one i throw haven't had a pike on this one yet uh i've had a few takes on the re red color though uh pike do look for in my opinion look for injured fish more than going fish so look for injured fish more than going fish that made no sense sorry about that go for injured fish fish such as like blood colors because they think it's going to be an easier bite going to be an easier they're not going to run away basically as quick they're not going to have to fight the fish good for winter time to throw an injured looking fish two shot teases roach colored fire tiger uh great baits not much i can say bad about them very big bait um great fun great fun to throw big big wakes behind them uh when you throw them due to the size of their tail huge tail on them uh as you can see that little glass rattler that's these in glass form um they're just rattle traps basically they're rattle kits they just put a rattle into your soft plastic you put them in the tail in the tail and stuff quite a good thing to have actually um this is oh uh, forget the name ripley ripley i think maybe don't quote me on that it comes usually with a hook on top i cut that off because in my opinion it's perfect enough with just a hook in the bottom it's a smaller kind of shad thick shad but smaller uh, where the hook's positioned, you're going to get the fish if they go for it. If they go for the back, that's said, that's a pike. They're going to take the tail, boom, your hook's in their mouth. They come from the side, boom, hook's in their mouth. Come from the front, bit harder hook. Pike usually don't attack from the front though. In my personal experience, they attack from either the bottom, the back swiping. So always hook, uh, hook nearer to the back tail that because they'll always kind of want to go for the back more. Less chance of them uh, getting bit back if they go for it, since that's pike pattern, like they want to get an easy meal. This is a bobcat. Not much to say about it. It's just basically curly tail with two hooks on it. It's a very good bait. Um, another thing. These are called, oh, are they called monster tees? I'm, I'm trying to think. These might be called monster tees or curl tees. I think it might be a monster tease. Basically, just huge curly tail baits. Um, absolutely humongous. I don't think you'd ever want to throw these on a river like I do. I don't really bring them a lot. Never really throw them. I kind of bought them for winter time more than that now, because then you can fish baits slower in the winter time. That's what you want to do. Fish is bait really slow, so the tail's just barely flicking like that. Just barely moving. Just gives it more action. You can't do that with a paddle tail. Curly tails are better in the winter time fish. You can fish them slower. More lethargic pike will go for them. Easy as. Storm roach. Don't really show it. Kind of bought. It was probably one of my first baits I've ever bought. Caught a few fish on it. Good fish. Good starter bait. For a, I think it's about 40 gram. Only about 6 euro. Good bait if you want to just get into a few more jointed soft plastics. Good start off it. Um, now, line shoes. One of my favorite baits that I don't have a lot of. I have two line shoes on me right now. That is the Roach in Golden Albino. Savage Gear Roach, line shoe system. 40, no, sorry, 80 gram line shoe system. If you don't know how it works, basically what happens, you hook the bait, pipe goes for it, hits the hook, doesn't have the weight of the bait to throw the hooks anymore. You catch the pike easier, it's better for fishing basically. Good bait, uh, good action. This only came out this year, bought it in England when I went over. This is the Pulse Tail Trout 102 gram line shoe. This bait moves really slow because of the fat tail and it just gives off a small little tug like that a big vibration though i have a rattler, rattler in the back of it small little rattler just to give a tiny bit more 
essence that it's an injured fish basically moves like that in the water the water comes up beside it pushes through them grooves and pushes it each side same thing goes pike goes for it line shoe comes out you catch the pike without him having the 102 grams to play around with in his mouth to throw the hook i'll just go quickly over traces and boxes i don't think you should buy expensive boxes my opinion is a box is a box so if it fits your bed it fits your bed this is an IMAX, I think I bought it for 10 quid. Big sections. Fits most of my soft, this is my soft plastic box. My jerk bed box on the other hand is a Savage Gear. I bought in England on sale for eight pound. It's just basically a box. It's a clear plastic box. No sections in it. You can put sections in it though. And all my jerk beds go on that. The way I have my jerk beds set up, rubber band around the hook so they don't get tangled as easily. I have this, that's an escorgers for course fishing. Don't really need to talk about that. Uh, jerk bait tress, titanium, very strong, just straight steel. Pike will never bite through that. The only thing is, with jerk bait tresses, you can get them, and the top clip is not made to quality. You'll lose fish, you lose baits with the top clip. I bought this one. The bigger the clip on a jerk bait tress, the better, the more strength it's going to have. I have jerk bait tresses over there and the clip is tiny. It's the same size clip as that. I'm not saying them clips are bad quality. I'm saying that they'll easily, if they're more easy to bend, um, because they're smaller. Sprawl, uh, crocodile prints. So that's a pice jaw. Put it down the jaw, grab the hook, twist, comes out easier, basically. Then you just have a hook sharpener, basically a file. I have a uh, nail clippers to cut line good little tool cutting for fly line cutting a basic anton to be honest it's just handy to have this cutting the fly line cutting the uh, small bits of uh i'm pretty sure what is it called braid off your knots and stuff like that um there's an armor players long nose players Everyone should have a line of those players in their box. It's, just, it's handy to take the pike. And last thing, but not least, an escorgers. Long escorgers, curved top. You can get the hold of the pike, twist, pop. It's a great thing to have. I said I was going to show the book rods in another video, but look, this is the starting video. It's going to be, it's already a half an hour. You're probably not going to watch it to this end point anyway. Um, so I'm gonna just show you quickly my rods. I'll just show oh my leg. Um I just show you the ends of them basically. This is my bake aston rod. It is a six foot six up to hundred grams savage gear with a Abu Garcia Pro Max loaded with 40 pound braid. Um the braid don't quote me on this but don't you don't need to buy expensive bread i know people who buy bread off wish and it does great for them just buy eight strand brand though don't buy enough don't buy four brand or four strand because it's more easily to wilt like more easily to break up uh going to stringy pieces and um, that's my bait casting rod i also have coarse rod oh shit this is more old rod a leader quicksilver uh this is supposed to be spinning it's 10 to 40 gram nine foot rod nine foot it doesn't look like nine foot but anyway um it's just a and then i have a shakespeare uh, reel on it uh i can tell you it's shakespeare bay a 40 ro this is just a nice little course rod i don't really go course fishing a lot it's just during the summertime when i just want to chill out for a little while ago on the course for a little while. Um, I have my fly rod. This is a airflow nine foot six seven rod. Uh, bought it as a combo. Nice little rod, floating line on it. A uh, leader comes with it. Everything comes with it. Box of flies. There's a pair of sunglasses come with it. I was looking up online. Good rod, cheapest rod, right? Cheapest 
uh, fly fishing starter kit basically for good like for good reviews and stuff it's probably the cheapest fly fishing starter kit uh, I've caught two small trout on this rod already uh, and I've only had it not too long actually um, I think maybe max of two weeks uh, now this is my first ever rod this is real honest stuff this is a dam reef reef not spin uh it's 240 i think that just means six foot uh it's 50 100 gram i used to use this for course fishing pike fishing dead baiting uh spinning and i used it for uh it's just it's a rod that i control smaller baits on uh now because it's a spinning rod uh it's also a rod I bring when it's too windy out to bring the bait caster and I'm, I know I'll just get backlashes. I uh, loaded with 30 pound braid in this just because it's uh, I use it for dead baiting as well so I don't really need the 40 pound brake snags off uh, when I'm dead baiting. And then the last but not least, I'm not going to put this, take this rod out, but this is a 12 foot carp rod. Um, I forget the brand. Oh, it's not on top of my head. Let me just take it out real quick. And, oh, is it Yeah, I know it was. Twelve foot carp rod from Corum. I use it for feeder, uh, carp fishing with a feeder, and I also use it for dead baiting. It's a great little rod. I think I bought it for forty five quid. Uh, Twelve foot, two point seven five pound test curve. Uh, it's a great little combo thing uh, to have. And then, last but not least. This is a small, I think it's like four foot, four foot, spinning rod for perch. It uh, throws five to 15 gram, loaded with a pin rat reel with 16 pound yellow uh, spider wire braid. Good little rock combo. Uh, it's just fun, fun for the perch. Not, uh, don't bring it out a lot. My brother uses it more than me now at this stage. Uh, but that is basically the whole idea of the thing. I'll just show you the net I use usually. And one more important thing for fish safety. This is the net I use. It's a agility, Shakespeare agility net. Circle net, very good net. Rubber mesh, uh, good for fish's uh, natural slime. So just in, uh, so the normal nets usually uh, like remove the slime. Rubber nets uh, keep more of the slime on them. Great thing to have. Land on that. Buy them. It's like 12 euro, 10 euro maybe. Buy them online. Great for fish safety. It's horrid to see people just fuck fish on the bank where there's rocks. If you're doing that, bring them to somewhere where there's fresh grass, there's soft grass, and place the fish down so they're not jumping around, they're hurting themselves in the long run. The difference between that and the landama is they're not going to be able to jump on and hit the ground. They're jumping on soft material. They're, you throw a bit of water in the landama so it's not uh, hard on their skin and it's better in the long run for the fish. I think that'll do for the video today. Um, as I said, I was only trying to do an introduction video, show off my gear basically, and I got the inspiration because I seen one of the people from my town uh, locally start a fishing channel, uh, Derek Donnelly. So hopefully I'll try and edit this video a bit just to add in uh, fish pictures and stuff. If not, I'll just throw the video up as is. Um, just kind of as an introduction to it all. Uh, hopefully you enjoy. Uh, all I'm going to ask is for a like. If you do enjoy the video. Um, there'll be more content to come. I'm going to start packing up this gear now. And I'll see you again. Uh, hopefully soon enough. Uh, thanks very much and see you later.